Hey everybody, this is Tyler with Tapper, so happy to be with you guys here today, and I'm going to show you how to do a bow tie the hard way. First thing I have to start out and do is I have to make the actual bow tie part of it. So I'm taking this piece of black palm, cutting a little piece off of it so I can shape it. So of course there's a variety of different ways that you can shape the wood. The first thing I did is I got the profile that I wanted and just drew it in pencil so I could rough it out. The first side I took it over to the belt sander and that seemed to work pretty well to shape it. It was going a little bit slow because I had an old belt. So then I went over and I put it in the vise and just used a file to rough out the other side. So this is the piece of wood that I'm going to be putting the bow tie in. It's a really beautiful piece of olive wood and I got a couple of matching sections of it, live edge. Here I've already done a little bit of finishing but I had to cut down the half. These are actually going to be turned into some retail shelving. And here you can see the crack that I have to fix. So you can't just leave it there because as it expands and contracts with heat and cold humidity, uh, that crack can actually grow and after I had it all finished I didn't want that wood moving at all. Now the point of a bow tie is that you cut a chamber into there, insert the bow tie in, and what it does is it kind of captures that piece of wood and prevents it from moving around in the future. So in the beginning I said I was doing this the hard way and I don't have any of the tools or the jigs to use a router to just cut this hole out and then cut an exact matching butterfly with it. Uh, I think it's kind of cool to have a little bit of a hand touch to it anyway. That said, if I was to do this over again, I think I would invest in the router jig. It'd take quite a while to get all this carved out by hand. As you saw, I got the bulk of the material out of there with a the drill bit. Here I'm going back in with a chisel to try and get it pretty close to the edges of those lines. So I kept going back and I would try and fit in the bow tie. And one time while I was doing that disaster struck, I actually broke off a piece of the wood here. It's not a huge deal, I'm just going to glue it back together. There's going to be enough epoxy in here by the time I'm done that it's all going to be held in there really well. Put a little bit of tape on top of that and I carved out the hole where it was going to go in there. I wanted to try and minimize any uh, sloppiness that I would have with the epoxy. I used 5 minute epoxy just because I wasn't really sure how wood glue was going to react with the casting resin epoxy I was going to use afterwards. So coating all the edges of there and then I'm just going to drive it inside there with the hammer. After that cured, I started looking at it and I decided I wanted to make this crack more of a feature. I wanted to round over the edges, make it kind of look more organic, make it look like it was supposed to be there as opposed to something that just happened when the log was drying. So I tried a couple different methods of stock removal I went through there. Chisel seemed to work the best. I also tried the carving knife, I tried a razor. Um, when I got in there, I started playing with the bow tie and I decided I wanted to profile it and kind of make it a little bit 3D. Uh, I'm going to cover all this with epoxy like I was saying, so I wanted to make it kind of pop out a little bit. I figured the more profile I put on it, uh, the more kind of visual interest it would have after it was done and sitting there. After the shapes were roughed out that I wanted with the chisel, I went back in there with some sandpaper. You are going to be able to see all this pretty well through it, so I wanted to make sure that it was smooth. After all that was smoothed out, it was time to go in there and cover the bottom of the board so I could pour the epoxy in. Now, I don't know why this tape seems to seal so well. I have tried using packing tape, masking tape. Uh, I always seem to get little leaks out of it, but this aluminized stuff with the adhesive backing on it, it always just seems to seal really well. It's a little bit more of a pain because you have to peel the backing off, but I think it's worth it because there's less of a mess on everything when you're done. This is the same epoxy I always use, the same thing you would use to wet out carbon fiber. It seems to work really well for wood in these applications as well. After it cured for a couple of days, it was time to get it sanded all flat. Uh, using a block here just so I can make sure to get it exactly even with the surrounding material. One cool thing with epoxy is if you just take a straight razor and use it like a cabinet scraper to scrape it back and forth at a 90 degree angle, you can kind of check your progress and see what it looks like. It gets all the scratch marks out. When I was scraping in there is so when it all started going sideways. I started getting down in there and it started feeling a little bit gummy and it just, the epoxy did not cure right. So I figured I could scrape it out, uh, just get down kind of in those crevices and then pour another layer onto it. What I didn't take into account is that this epoxy didn't end up going down all the way into all the parts that I scraped there. So after I finished it up I started looking at it and I just really wasn't happy with the finish on it. You could still see where I had scraped away underneath it. So coming up on the third time that I had to pour epoxy, I really didn't want to have to come back and do this again, so I'm taking a flap wheel and the grinder, and I figured I'd just dish out a nice smooth dish on there so there'd be no place that that epoxy wouldn't be able to get into. 
The other thing I had noticed with the other pours is that I had a few bubbles in there. So what I'm doing here is I'm bursting the bubbles with the heat gun. I'm going back and pouring a little bit more on top. I'm going to do this a couple of times because I burst the bubbles on the first couple of pours, but you could still see the ones that were deep down in the resin didn't quite get touched by that heat gun. After going over it a couple more times, getting the schmutz out, it was time to let it cure. Thankfully, the third time seemed to be the charm. It came out really well, glassy, no bubbles, and it was time to get it all even with the rest of the surface. First, I tried to use just a random orbital sander to get everything off. I tried some 60 grit, some 80 grit. It kept getting really clogged up using this rubber thing to remove it, but it was just going really slow. So I decided to do something a little bit more risky just because it can remove stock so fast. Uh, took out the belt sander just to really get through it. If you are working with epoxy and sanding, you do have to be a little bit careful because if you get it really hot, like with a belt sander just sitting on it, it can do some really weird stuff and gum up on you. So what I would do is I would sand it, take it off, take a little break, and then come back to it. At this point, everything was all level, so I'm just going through it, normalizing the surface, working up through the grits. I got all the way up to 240 before I went over and started to finish it. I really didn't need to finish it yet, but I was kind of itching to see what this wood was going to look like after it had some clear on it. It's a semi-gloss, oil-based polyurethane. And as you'll see here in a minute, I think it turned out really well with just a single coat. Now, of course, when I go back and do the finish work on everything, I'll sand in between each coat, and I'll probably do two or three layers, and that should really help out the finish. So this video is actually going to be the first out of probably about three videos I'm going to do on these retail shelves. I thought this warrant had enough information that it warranted its own video on just doing the bow tie in case that was the only thing you were interested in. But when the other videos do get here, I will make sure to link them in the descriptions. So I want to thank you guys so much for coming and taking the time to watch this video. I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button if you haven't already subscribed to see more. And I will see you guys next time.